event now. Andre, you're kind of controlling it. We're yes. changing the uh, format around a little bit. We're learning. So uh, welcome to TFL Now Live. This is our new live show, uh, our morning show that brings you the latest news, the latest gossip, uh, and all the fun stuff that's happening in the world of autos and trucks. So, uh, Andre, can you turn that down? Because it's really hard for me to talk while I'm talking There's to myself. There's a seven-second delay between Roman talking and then it coming up on the speaker. Yeah, well, so, but guys, I'm going to control the comments. So when you guys comment, we'll see them, and then we'll oh, answer we'll comments. That. We'll get to that. Right? Yeah, yeah we'll get to the shout-outs. Yeah, we call yeah. them shout-outs. Yeah, you're really eager. Let me, let me, <laughs> let me keep going here. So uh, coming up on today's show, we've got some uh, big Raptor news, and we've got some big Toyota news. And, of course, um, this is all new to us, so we've got a new set. Yes. But we've got the same old team. To my left is my man, Nathan. Hey, guys. And, of course, to my right is Andre, uh, who's going to be doing the news segment. Uh, and speaking of the news, we're going to get to that in a second. Let's talk about what we're doing on today's show. Okay. First and foremost, we're doing the uh, top t top eight. Why eight? Well, because, because it's, it's going to uh, buy ten. Yeah, it's a, it's a list that was put together by IC Cars. Yes, it's their list. Yeah, top eight cars to buy uh, used or to buy new. And these are basically cars that depreciate the most and the least. Yep. Yeah, so these are great uh, numbers to know if you're out there car shopping. Next, we're going to be doing our shout-outs, Andre. Now you can talk about the shout-outs. P701 says, be nice to Andre. <laughs> Thank you, P701. I appreciate that. We'll do our guys. best. We'll do our best. <laughs> so Andre's going to be reading your comments wherever you are in the world. We want to have you guys join us. Yes. Um, we're also going to be doing uh, the uh, top two best cars to buy used. So each of us are going to come up with uh, basically the cars we would recommend buying used over new. And that's going to be coming up, well, at the end of the show because we're going to keep you in suspense. Uh, and then, Andre, you're going to be talking about stolen tailgates. What uh, state and what cities do you think that they're stolen from the most? This is the data for the United States. Yes. Yes, but uh, I'll surprise you, I think. Okay. How about you, Nathan? No! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get another comment, be nice to Nathan. <laughs> it's too easy. People know it's too easy. probably what state they're going to be it's stolen. It's not Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to also be doing a giveaway where we're going to be doing a, a, a hat giveaway. We've got a whole bunch of hats back there. And, and that's uh, with picture of the day, right? Yeah, and the thing about the giveaway, it's only in the U.S., so if you guys are joining us from... Uh, any else place else in or the world. Thailand yeah, or we just some other country yeah, we, we can't we, send. We don't have the budget to send. But I'll tell you what, if you do answer it correctly and you are overseas, I will write your name on my arm the next time we broadcast. Nice. Wow. Yeah, you wow. like that? Yeah, what wow. if it's something like, you know, really, really long? Big Buckhead. Uh, well, I'm, I might have to censor a little bit of that. <laughs> and of course, we're doing Nathan's favorite feature, which is the pick of the day. Yep, that's you guys, right. You guys are going to get to pick the pick of the day. Well, yeah, how do people win? How, yeah, do you, how, do how, do, how, how do you win? Well, the pick of the day is just for fun. You're going to win by doing a trivia contest. This is oh, a, trivia. This is a, well, no, this is a hint uh, for what's well, coming Well, sure, okay. okay. All right, All right. so, um, you know, a lot of Raptor news. Let's get right to it. Uh, why don't we start with what's going on with the Raptor Ranger? Well, I think the biggest news this week is truck news. And it's actually not coming out of the United States, but it's coming out of Bangkok, Thailand. Yes. Ford is unveiling their new Ford Ranger Raptor, which is their off-road version of the new Ranger. And but why Thailand? Why why isn't it not here or Texas? Great, great beaches? Uh, no, not exactly. I, I just, Ford is saving it for overseas. I, oh, go please, figure. Ford! Why are you doing this to us? Uh, we, you know, this is a big market for Raptors and Rangers and everything else. Considering well, how good the Chevy ZR2 is, yes, and how many sales it's beginning to get, right? It seems only logical that they would bring it here, right? Well, let's show them. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let, have a look. yeah have a let's look. show the prototype. Yeah, let's show the prototype that, that the Australian Ford put out. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even see it. There you go. I think we got. I think we got the point. We got the point. I think so, whoever is driving it is a really good driver, first of all. So look at the tires and wheels. That's the same uh, as the old Raptor wheels, right? Those are yeah, basically those are, those are basically the wheels that we have on our long term. And Raptor. it looks like BFGs. They're looks, using BFGs. Looks like BFGs, and we know. Uh, that the current Ranger, which they just introduced in Detroit, if you guys were with us, you were there for the unveiling, came with the new, um, well, the, the Mustangs 2.3 liter. Basically. Yeah, the four-cylinder. So yeah. 
the American version of the Ranger, which will be built in Michigan, actually, yes. mm -hmm. as a 2019 model, which is going to be on sale like in January of 2019. So it's still like a, out. 11 months away. Yeah, um, it's going to have one engine and 10-speed automatic, no manual transmission. So, um, so I was online doing a lot of research into the new Raptor Ranger or Ranger yeah. Raptor, whatever. It's the same. Um, and there's speculation that they might be putting a 2.7 into it, the 2.7 uh, EcoBoost, which would be, yeah, that would a be, lot more torque, oh, a lot yeah. more power. Or, that yes. would be, you know, like 300 plus horsepower. Um, and I gotta say, boys, I'm jealous. Yeah, me too. Well, I am also jealous, especially like you said, TRD Pro Tacoma is actually uh, gonna come out in Chicago this week as mm -hmm. well. And that's the other news um, we'll, we'll get to in a minute. And um, ZR2 is in the market. So this truck will definitely compete if it's brought here to the United States. This truck is gonna be critical. I have a theory, real quick. Let's hear it. That they may not bring this here, however, because they're bringing the Bronco here, it's entirely possible that a lot of the running gear on this might be on the Bronco. That's just a theory. My theory. Know, uh, I would I would put down a deposit on that. So so, so here here's what's coming, guys. You know this: the JT, the Jeep, uh, Wrangler pickup is coming in, yeah. and that's going to be a direct competitor to this. Oh, you, without you, a doubt. You know the Jeep's not going to. Uh, let this go. So uh, right now, there's a lot of new mid-sized trucks coming out, and I think uh, performance is a way to go. And speaking of mid-sized trucks, let's show them the picture that, that Toyota dropped this morning um, uh, from uh, their press room. And this picture is pretty incredible because I think this is the first time that, that we've ever seen a, a factory, factory option snorkel. Look at that. There's a snorkel. snorkel. There's a snorkel. Look, but doesn't it look a little bit like an elephant? Like a It's got that. Yeah. 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 It, it follows the contour of, of the windshield as opposed to the aftermarket ones, which are very straight. Yeah. This one has a nice curvature to it. But we have no information to give you guys on it right now. But we will, but, but we will on Thursday. Yes. But we will on Thursday. And we'll be there when hopefully this vehicle is revealed, whatever this vehicle may be. It's a Tacoma, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but when, when this is revealed, you guys will have a front seat because that's another thing we're doing at the Chicago Auto Show. We are going to be publishing uh, the unveiling of these videos live, so you could be there next to us in the front row. We're calling it TFL Front Row. Yeah. Right. We're going to set up this camera in the front row. We're going to give you uh, the very first chance to see what Toyota is coming up with, as well as the other manufacturers. Yeah, and two things really quick. So Toyota unveiled two teaser. This is one teaser image. So Tacoma, the snorkel. The second teaser image they showed were like tiny, tiny uh, Forerunner, Tundra, and Tacoma. Yeah. Um, and that's all they showed. So there'll be three vehicles that they'll be showing. We know that. Yep. We know that they're off-road versions. We know that the snorkel is coming. But everything else is embargoed until Thursday. And Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Central Time, everything will be there. Boom. So, so I've got some questions for you guys. Uh, how important is overlanding? Because obviously snorkels come from overlanding, right? It's so you could go forward rivers and cross deserts, so a lot of air is clean when it goes into the truck and i just think it's way cool to have uh, a snorkel on a vehicle but how important really is it is it one of those things that's like more poser than real right will people actually use this or will these things be running around like chicago with on, the mall? on the mall with a bunch of snorkels shooting out the top of them you want my point of view yeah i think it's the coolest thing ever i i'd, I'd put a snorkel on my wife's mazda if i could <laughs> i would I, I totally would wait it, wait that's a cx Five? No, no, it's a Mazda 3. A, a snorkel on a Mazda I, 3. I totally would do that if she would let me. <laughs> the thing is, is that, um, okay, I, I've off-roaded with a snorkel before, and there's nothing quite like being able to go really deep into the water and realizing... Now, of course, you're talking about the one in your mouth. No. That <laughs> but the other side of it is, a lot of guys throw on a snorkel just to look cool, and then they figure, oh, I can still use this, and they don't put it in properly. And that's really when the fun begins because they'll go into the water and the water will get into all their components and their electronics and they'll completely ruin their vehicles. So if you're going to get a snorkel, make sure you're properly waterproofed. All right, Andre, yes. what are the people saying out there? What, give me some shout outs, please. Well, uh, Reggie Matthew says hey, that... Hey, Reggie. Uh, hey, Reggie. Um, says that the uh, snorkel would be useful in a flood. Well, Hell so yeah. fording water. Look at Texas. Well, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. a good point. Good yeah, point. Texas. Yeah. Absolutely, Reggie. Um, they said... Um, Fabian is here. Hello. Hey. Um, he says that Toyota needs to uh, put a diesel in, in there. Without a doubt, but... I don't know if they ever will. Diesel always. <laughs> diesel <laughs> now, diesel always, always. diesel in the future. Oh, it, need, it, it needs to go into the Any tundra. truck, diesel. Yeah. Um, 
Hey Nathan, uh, Jordan says hello. Hey Jordan, how you doing buddy? Yeah, so he's got the Mazda 3 as well. And, and, oh, good car. And by the way guys, if you're watching this live, then of course we're talking to you. If you're watching this as a video recorded uh, during the normal you know, YouTube day, uh, then uh, keep in mind we're going to be doing these shows at least right now twice a week, Monday and Fridays. We snuck this one in because of course we had this extra news. Big news. Big yeah. news. And we're kind of trying to kind of do a soft launch, so hopefully we can work this into a daily show that'll be on every day at uh, 10 o'clock mountain time mountain time um and we'll be going live uh so uh, next time we're gonna go live boys with the show is from the chicago auto show act actually on, on friday uh, yeah. on friday so be sure to stay tuned for that and i think what we'll have to do is we'll have to end up going to the stand and, and actually showing you the the real vehicle once yeah. it's unveiled <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yeah. so so this is just the beginning of the story we'll make sure to follow it through to the end yeah. All right. Um, any more shout outs before we get to our top eight list? Well, yeah, there's um, Sean has just reminded me about, about the new ben, Mercedes Benz Sprinter van. Yep. We know it's coming. Uh, we're just, um, you know, we're going to give you that information on our website, tfltruck.com. So go back to the website. We'll have all the information there. You know, we get a lot of emails, guys, people asking us about like stuff that we, they want to know, like what's happening with this vehicle mm -hmm. or that truck. And I can promise you, if we know anything, the second we know it, Nathan is on it on TFL car or truck. Andre's putting it up on truck. So there's nothing we don't know that you don't know. Right. We, we don't hold anything. We just publish it right well, away. Well, it's in our interest to let you guys know yeah. so everybody knows. But, but, but they should know. The only thing we'll hold back from you guys is when the information is embargoed, which means that the automaker has said, until this date, do not release information, supposedly so everybody has an equal chance who's members of the press. But otherwise, yeah, we'll, we'll let you know and when we know. By the way, why is this on there? Yeah. yeah, what's, yeah. What, yeah what, our producer's act. Our producer. Yeah, what's, well, because it's the number eight car. And oh, okay. I thought he was drinking. Oh, that was like a that. good segue. <laughs> it's in your coffee, bro. All right. All right. All right. So let's get to our list, which is the uh, top ten, or actually eight, I keep saying top eight cars uh, that you should buy used over new. That's another way of looking at it, right? Uh, and these are cars uh, that lose the most. Yep. We'll start with that. We'll start with that. And... Uh, this vehicle right there, according to IC Cars, right? IC yep. Cars put the list together, lost 30% in one year. In one year. Which is the equivalent of $9,682. Whoa. <laughs> this is this is this is pretty impressive considering the fact that vehicles like this that have you know long warranties and whatnot lose value so quickly. So something to think about in terms of when you're buying a so, vehicle. So the question is, do you buy this new and take the depreciation or do you wait a year? and buy it new. And I think that's buy why news. they created this list, yeah. to kind of draw that information out yeah. and say, you know, after a year, you could save almost 10,000 on this. The next car is very surprising on the list. What's but there's that? a reason, okay. there's a reason uh, why. Well, okay. I'll tell the car. Well, first of all, we're gonna bring it up, and that is the Toyota Camry. Now, this is the 2017 Camry, this one here. Remember, there's a brand new one out there. So that one isn't on the list, this one is, okay? Just, just so everybody knows. And so the old Camry lost 30.7% of its value. How much does that equate to real dollars? That's $8,213. In one year? In one year. Wow. But that doesn't count for the new one. But the best selling sedan in the country. In yes. the country. Yeah. But this is long in the tooth and it's been replaced. I have a theory about this too. The reason why it's on this list, I think the midsize sedan market is so competitive that each manufacturer is updating their cars often, remember? Yeah. This Camry came out like 2016 or 2015. So every two years they're refreshing it, making a new car. And when you do that, the older cars lose value, right? That because is true. The new car is always there coming up. Sorry. Well, and the current one, the brand new one, it's an all new vehicle on a new platform, new power plants, the whole nine yards. All right, let's go to number six. And of course, as always, we do our top down list. So we start at the the, the, the least appreciating and go to the most, right. out of the most uh, on the On yeah. the list, yeah. All right, so number six is what, Nathan? Number six is the Infiniti Q50. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't expect this one to be on the list, but according to IC Cars, yeah. its value over the course of one year dropped 32.2%, which is $14,654. That's the equivalent. That's a lot. That's wow. a lot of dough. Wow. So, like, you know, if you're thinking about getting this or a three series, you know, wait a year, and you can save a buttload of money on this vehicle. And these are actually well built, right? Yeah, we've reviewed them. We've taken them on our hot or not. Paul has taken them around the track. Uh, I think that Infinity doesn't have quite the brand cachet that like uh, 
BMW Lexus. or BMW or Audi, might, or Audi might have yeah. it. So that that's probably one of the reasons for that. And if you guys have some ideas why these cars depreciate so much, uh, you know, put them in the comments and we'll shout them out to you. Absolutely. Okay, so let's get to number five. And uh, this actually surprised me because I thought it would be uh, higher on the list. Uh, and that's the Cadillac CTS. It lost over the course of one year 33.4%, which translates to <laughs> Eighteen thousand one hundred and seventy dollars. Yes, that's a lot. That's a lot of dough. So Here's, there's okay. another thing that's happening here, right? And a lot of cars on this list are kind of luxury sports sedans. And um, so let's let's do the other one and see. There's a trend here. All right, go to number four. Number four, that is the Lincoln MKZ. It lost thirty three point seven percent over the course of one year, according to IC Cars. That translates to. Nineteen thousand three hundred and twenty-eight dollars. Wow, wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of money. That's just you might as well just take that money and just go. Poof. Yeah, right. it's it, it 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 is quite a bit. Now, here's a question, guys. Why do you think it lost so much money? I have an answer. Yes, I think a lot of these cars are leased. Yes, I, I agree with you. Yeah, this, these are the kind right. of cars you lease because people inherently, you guys inherently know that these guys are going to go down in value, right? Right, so, right. So why you know buy? The bread by the loaf when you can get it by the slice and also you're a lot of first. these cars are also fleet cars yep yeah so if you go to like a premium rental company or if you go to like a limousine service a lot of these cars are used as shuttles right and they get turned over quite often so they might sell them a year later and there you go now the next one is a real surprise nathan yeah uh, number three yeah that's the mercedes-benz e-class uh it is surprising Especially because it lost 34.5% of its value, which translates to $22,919, basically $23,000. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's the one that lost the most money. Not percentage, but the, lost, the most money on our list. It's, it's really impressive, considering. I think it also has to do with that the new car just came out, right? Because they're refreshing the Yeah, class. there is a new version of this, once again, um, just like Toyota. Yeah, so I think that has something to do with it as well. So maybe the lesson here is, if you're going to buy a car, Unless you're getting a serious discount for having it be the last year of production for that vehicle, you may want to hold off if you're worried about depreciation, right? Because if, if, let's say, the new model's coming out in 2018 and you're buying the 2017, chances are that vehicle's going to depreciate because of the mere fact that there's a new version of it. Yeah. Precisely. And that goes to our next one, yes. which is the Jeep Compass. That vehicle, this is the old one. The new one is completely different. So the that's old the one. one. No, that's the old one. That's, no, the, old that's one. the old one. Sorry. Yeah, it you're is right. the old one. Yeah. Uh, the new one is basically based on the uh, Renegade, but slightly stretched right. and whatnot, and a completely different vehicle than this one. This is the old, old Yeah, no, you're one. right. This is the one that they made it look like uh, the oh, Grand Cherokee. Yeah, 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 they did. And they did a really good job in keeping this thing alive for a long time. But uh, consider the fact that it's lost 34.8% um, of its value, which translates to $9,652. Now, the reason that's less than the other ones we've been reading off is because this is a very inexpensive vehicle to begin with. So, yeah, if you bought this used, you're probably doing well. And, you know, financially, you're going to save a lot of dough. And, and the other side of that coin, of course, is, Nathan, you just buy, wait for a year, wait for it to come off lease and save even boat, more money. Yeah, a yeah. boatload of money. So, you know, you can look at it either way. Uh, the other, you know, the chances are if it's depreciating that much in the first year, it's probably not going to hold its value in the long run. Yeah. These are probably vehicles that if you go on Craigslist or any of the other IC cars, right, you're right. going to find it at a relative discount. All right, what's number one, dude? Number one is the Cadillac XTS. There it is. <laughs> Whoa, look at those lights. Yeah, and I haven't seen any of these on the road, it's, at least in Colorado, so I just thought they stopped building. Anyway, they lose 38.7% of their value over the course of one year, according to IC Cars, yeah. which translates to $20,965. You know, Cadillac has been struggling to reinvent itself, yeah. and it's in a really tight place right now. Basically, their crossovers and SUV cell, the Escalade cells, the SR5 cells, right? X XT5, yeah, yeah. Cell, sorry. And uh, the sedans just aren't selling, and that's because no sedans are selling. Well, they are, there are some that are selling deliveries and whatnot are being extended and turned into limousines, right. and they have stuff like that. But yeah, they're, um, they're really trying to push it and get these things out there. And in some cases, these, some of the cars are brilliant, fast, fun. But you here's, know, a, here's a question I have for our viewers, uh, and we'll do a shout out. Mm -hmm. uh, hey guys, why aren't you buying sedans? Simple question. Why? Why is everybody? It's buying still them? a large segment. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Chew on that for a second. Chew on that. And let us know. Uh, so, before, and before we get to, a couple be, questions. Yeah. Before we get to the uh, 
second part of our list, which are the cars that depreciate the least or right. the ones that you probably might want to buy new. Um, I've got our giveaway question. Okay. Uh, and as you can see right here, I'm holding up a mug. Mm -hmm. And it's got HUE166 on it. HUE166. Why is that important? The first person who knows why this is significant or why I'm holding this mug up uh, is going to win a hat. And so, do they email us at they, info at tflcar.com? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send us an email. The first one to send us an email at info at tflcar.com uh, is going to get this mug. First one with the right answer. And if you're in Japan, sorry. Are you going <laughs> to wash the mug Great Britain, before you send it? We're not giving the mug. We're giving a hat. Oh, okay. Yeah, this, this is my mug. Okay. Yeah, uh, but the people... Mug. I thought you were going to send the mug, actually. No, yeah, no, you I'm made gonna, it sound like you are going to send the mug. No, I'm gonna, I'm, no, this is just a trivia question. But you're going to send them the hat that, that has something to do yeah, with tell, it. Yeah, tell No, I'm, we have all these hats that have different brands. Tell me your favorite car company, and I'll send you a hat with, they, the with that car. Give me your top three, and I'll send you one of them. Okay, they. cool. All right, Andre, sorry. So we got some shout-outs. Well, yeah, John Sotomayor says... Um, is there an embargo on the Tacoma? Yes, there is an embargo. There is some information that we cannot share right now. Mm -hmm. Thursday, you'll know everything then. Nine o'clock central. Um, somebody, um, I think Tyrus, actually, hello Tyrus, um, says that, you know, talking about the depreciation, like the Lincoln MKZ, he, he says that the Lincoln Continental has something to do with it, maybe, because that's, that's a, a bigger car. Uh, more luxurious car, and maybe that's why the MKZ is not doing so well. Was it Tyrus or Tyrese? No, there's a T Y R U S. Okay, just wanted to make sure your name was pronounced. Um, no, we're, we're gonna uh, I apologize. Yeah, uh, just ahead of time. <laughs> I apologize about He's the Russian. names. <laughs> if your name is not Ivan or uh, Oleg, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're Svetlana, please <laughs> send us an send immediate... lots of information, please. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, before we get to uh, the next list, yes. Andre, you've got a little bit, a bit of news about tailgates. We promised to talk about tailgates. So, gentlemen, All let's right. talk tailgates. Tailgate so, time. So, this information comes to us from the National Insurance Crime Bureau. These are stolen tailgates. Stolen tailgates. And why do people steal tailgates? They want coffee tables. Uh, well, <laughs> not quite. Because, because people break tailgates and they're yes. easy to steal. And they cost a lot of money. So they're, they sell them secondhand on Craigslist. Right. According to the Crime Bureau, the cheapest new tailgate is about $1,300. So um, that's the problem. They're easy to steal. They're valuable pieces of uh, equipment. And people want them. But for 2017, there were fewer tailgates stolen than in 2016. Can you guys guess why? And why is that? Because they're lockable. Yes. More new trucks have locks on their tailgates now, so they're harder to steal. If you lock it. If you don't lock it, then they can take it. Right, but well, do you want to know the top yeah, five? Yeah. Let's, let's start wanna... with the states, and then we'll go to the city. So what are sure. the top five states and so, cities? So the top five states where the tail, most tailgates get stolen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the number five is Nevada. Yep. Number four is Arizona. Yep. Number three, Florida. Can you guys guess the uh, second and the first? Uh, it might be states that are the biggest and have the most truck buyers. <laughs> so what are the biggest states, Nathan? That'd be California and Texas? Yes. Yes, you got it. California number two, Texas number one. So if you live in like Houston or Dallas, uh, you might want to watch out for your tailgate. Please lock your tailgate. And uh, um, actually... Uh, hey, thanks for putting up the tailgate. Wait, by the way, what do you guys think of this, right? So. Um, this has been, a, you know, I remember me and Nathan were on a program where the new uh, Tundra came out. Yes. And they were so proud that they had stamped the word Tundra into their tailgate. Yes, yes, they were the first. Well, well, well that's what we thought, right? Yeah. Uh, and I was not honestly aware of who stamped what first. So <laughs> Tundra was like, hey, we're the first to do it. And then Ford came along and did F 150, the same, boom. Boom, did the same thing, right? And then Chevy, Ram. then Ram did it. Boom, boom. Well, Ram. Ram is more like, they like pasted the letters that kind of stick out, right? No, but these these guys are actually talking about metal stamping. Like they did it too with Ram. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now Chevy has done it with the new Silverado. And so I, uh, in our video, remember, I said, you know, now Chevy's following the lead. And somebody in the comments section said that Chevy has done this since the beginning of time. <laughs> that Chevy has actually been the it was the first company like way in the day to but do this. But Ford guys say no, Ford did it. So so there's a big controversy. Who stamped theirs first? <laughs> We don't know. <laughs> yeah, we honestly can't. I know that there were, and, and I saw some pictures of older uh, Chevys with uh, it being stamped. Yeah, so. let, let, let us know in the comments. Hey, Andrea, has anybody figured out why I have U166 on my, uh, any shout outs there? Why I have it on my uh, mug? The AG says, where's Mr. Truck? But <laughs> so Truck. far. He's under the Jeep right now looking at the. Uh, so far, Mark uh, Dieters. Yes. I, I hope I, I'm pronouncing your name right. 
I think he has a very good idea. Do you want me to spoil yeah, yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, it's or, fine. Yeah, you can say it. Uh, so Mark says it was the oldest Range Rover. Uh, well, you're halfway there. You're halfway well, just there. Just give it to him. Come on. Well, he's got to send us a... You get, Mark, send us a... Send uh, us an email, email at info at, at tflcar.com. Tfl car. Uh, yeah, yeah, because you're halfway there. We'll give it to him. This was the license plate on the very first Land Rover. Rover. So the very first Land Rover had Hue 166 on it. Yeah. And that's why it's there. By the way, Nathan, why do we have uh, a Jeep Wrangler behind us? Bleh, because it looks cool in the set? No. Andre, why do we have a Jeep Wrangler behind us? It's uh, it's hinting at our list. That's right. That's right, sitting at the list yes. that we I don't want to spoil it, but I didn't want to spoil it either. I, I, I just want to get back to our list. Okay. okay. All right. So let's get back Returning. to it. Uh, let's get So we just did the top eight vehicles that depreciate the most. Let's talk about the ones that depreciate the least, starting with number nine. So these are top nine. What, what the, I see cars. What are you guys doing? Yeah, I see cars. Come on, make it ten. Yeah. Make up one. <laughs> All, right. All right. So number nine is the Subaru. Subaru. Sorry, it's been a while since I've said the word Subaru. <laughs> Subaru WRX. It lost 14.2% over the course of one year, which is the equivalent of 9,100. No, 4,000. Is that four? Yeah. 4,000. No more of those fours looking like nines. $4,115. <laughs> yeah, uh, obviously, this is a vehicle that is kind of alone, right? With the Evo gone now, uh, the, its main competitor has been uh, itself vanquished. Eliminate. Eliminate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so to speak. Um, now, bear in mind that you know this, this vehicle. Um, is supposedly going to go through a major change soon. And when it does, the value on the current vehicle will drop even There's a couple more about this WRX. Yeah, so there's um, about the WRX, yeah. Well, but the reasons why it's on this list, there's one reason. IIHS, which tests uh, crash safety, rated it highest. Yep. Top safety of PIC Plus. So it has a really good safety rating. Also, um, um, KBB did a, a report on this, and mm. they also named this car as the best resale value. So there's a lot of data to back this up. Absolutely. A cousin of mine just bought one of these, by the way. Is there a scratch going down the side? Oh, let's move on to the next Ooh. one. You think we'll ever get the review one? <laughs> no. Yeah, maybe. You never know. <laughs> okay, the next one is surprising to me, actually, is the Jeep Renegade. It dropped, now that does say uh, 14. 14.1%, okay. 14. Uh, which is, actually, this is a special one. This, is, uh, uh, this doesn't, yeah. Oh, did you guys drive this in Moab? Yeah, this is the one we drove in Moab. Yeah, this is, this is a prototype concept. So its loss was $2,897. Now, if you consider that over the course of one year, that's actually really good. You know, we just had this in our office, and uh, I was ready to hate it, and I didn't. I actually kind of like it. They have uh, the base model with the manual transmission that has just basically an all-wheel drive system. Really good for the money. Yeah, it's, you know, it's one of those magic cars that's, Bigger on the inside than on the outside. It's got mm. a lot of utility. If you guys are thinking about seriously going off road, I wouldn't get one of those. Yeah, get one of those. But as a yeah. kind of a you know like fun run around, it's good. It's good on the trail. It's yeah. pretty good on the and, trail. And of course, people are going to be typing in reliability, reliability, right, Andre? That's you know. So far, they haven't said it, but thank you for bringing yeah, it. Yeah, now we're going to get it. <laughs> yeah, now we're going to get it. But look, well, let's talk about then a really reliable car company or one that but, has. But before we get to that, I want to talk to why we don't talk about reliability. Yes, please. So, yeah, so there's a lot of companies out there who do reliability testing. We don't. We get our cars at most for a week. I'm trying to get some vehicles for us for longer, like six months. Occasionally, and, we get. That. And so you know, to be talking about reliability based on hearsay is not very. Scientific. TFL. Right. Right. right, right. We're not going to say, well, the word is that, you know, we have to test them ourselves. And once we test them ourselves, then we can honestly say to you guys, this vehicle, you know, one of our key virtues is we're always trying to be transparent. Yep. So this vehicle had these issues and it or didn't have these issues. So, you know, if you want reliability, plenty of publications to do it. We don't have the things long enough. But we do have some long-term vehicles. For example, this Jeep behind us yeah. has been here for two years almost. Two years, right? yeah. Yeah. And we've had... Uh, we had the Power Wagon. For several about months. Several months. Yeah. We had the Jeep, uh, Motor Mountain USA Jeep for a year. Yep, yeah. we had that for a year. And we had that Nissan Frontier for Six several months. months. Yes. Yeah. So, 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 which may beg the question what went wrong on those vehicles? So, the, what, the Wrangler that we had for a year, we had like sway three. Bar. Sweet, the, the sway bar wouldn't, dis wouldn't reconnect. Once, the, yes. Once the check engine light came on and then went away on its own. Yeah. And then the uh, one of the Rubicon. Uh, Shock snap. Snaps. But that may have been used. That may error. have been Andre's fault. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. Uh, so that may have been our user uh, error. <laughs> it, it could have been. Um, but the point is, is that. And then on the. Uh, the Frontier was salt as a rock. Yeah, but so was the Power Wagon. 
power was The solid. only thing that went wrong with it is it blew a tire, and that wasn't the vehicle's fault at all. I think it had to do with Mr. Mr. Crunch. <laughs> all right, let's keep going, Nathan. Number seven, please. Number seven is the Honda HRV. That's the baby one. That's the baby crossover. It depreciated 13.8%, which is the equivalent of $2,885. Yeah, yeah. That's really low depreciation, it's actually. Value. Yeah, and you know what? By the way, guys, quick tip for you. If you're not into all-wheel drive, but you want something that's kind of fun that has a manual transmission option, they build a front-wheel drive manual version of this, and it is a lot of fun to drive. Um, next, Nathan? Next is the Chevy Colorado. One of my favorite trucks in this sky, this is the ZR2 version, and it's been doing very well this year. Uh, dropped 13.7%, which is the equivalent of, is that a nine? $4,154. Oh, boy. Yeah, we need to talk to Zach about that. But, okay, so... I, I have an idea about this one. Okay, go for it. Um, I think um, part of it, why it's depreciating very little is because of choice. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of choice that Colorado Chevy... Oh, right, sure, you got a diesel or the V6, and there's even a four-cylinder on the base model. Right, different transmissions with each one of those engines, different cab configurations. So I think people are actually holding on to these. Because they're buying the diesels, they hold on to them for a very long time. Yeah, so sure. They're not turning them over every year. So I think that's one of the reasons. I love your your arm things too, because yeah, it helps. <laughs> you know why I think it is? Let's face it, midsize trucks are just red hot right now. Midsize trucks are doing really well, and it's going to grow. This they're segment in. is going to expand very soon, and I, I'm excited like, like about tomorrow. that. <laughs> like tomorrow. Like <laughs> tomorrow. But I, I, I mean, look, a lot of people that they're like, well, why buy a mid-sized truck when it's almost as much as a full-size truck? Mm. Some people don't have big garages. Some people simply like driving smaller trucks, and some people simply like the look of smaller yeah. trucks. Yeah, and let's face it, this size truck, even though it's mid-sized, it's the same size as a full-size was two generations ago. That, yeah. So these, are, about, these yeah. are big trucks. All right, let's keep going, Nathan. Number five, please. Number five, once again, Honda, and that's the Honda Pilot. It dropped 13.7%, and that's the equivalent of $4,858. Off of MSRP. Off the MSRP. And one, this is from IC Cars, by the way, all this information. Um, yeah, well, I mean, this is a good... I think IC Cars should be paying us every time we say Every time we say their name? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I actually know a couple of the guys over there. Yeah, who wouldn't pay us. No, okay. <laughs> they, they won't. Now, one of the things about this vehicle, this is a love-hate thing. We had a chance to take it out on the snow, and it did really well recently. It has a push-button transmission available, and although the transmission itself is awesome, I don't like the push-button transmission. Yeah, either. ever try to back up in a push-button? You have to take your eyes off uh, the road and find uh, it. And, and, and worse if you try to do like a four-point turn or eight-point burn. Uh, or if you spill coffee on that thing, it yeah, gets really yeah, nasty, it's too. not great. All right, let's keep going. Number four, uh, another mid-sized truck. This one is really surprising for me because it's so old, and that's the Nissan Frontier. This is a platform and a body, basically, that's been around forever. And it is now the oldest vehicle on the list of mid-sized trucks. Okay. And, and we're not hearing anything for Chicago. I haven't heard anything. Yeah, sorry, guys. As far Chicago. as I know, it's nothing. They might surprise us. But they could surprise. I hope they do. Well, having yeah. said that, we've seen a prototype running around. Yes. So, so we, have, yes. we have a prototype version of that. And usually when we see prototypes... We see it's cars. Months. <laughs> about, we, we see, see cars. cars. No, go. we see trucks. <laughs> we see trucks. It, it could be a year out is what we're yeah, saying, about a year possibly. Out. So it's the oldest truck in the market. There's a new one coming. Now, this uh, it dropped by 13.3%, which is the equivalent of uh, uh, $3,180. This is a really old truck. This is a hell of a smart value, basically. I mean, that depreciation is so low for such an old vehicle. And hey. I think part of the reason is because it's already affordable. Our frontier was was starting at nineteen thousand dollars. Yeah. So that's already affordable price. So there is not much room. So that's so, my so I've got theory. some news we haven't shared with anybody. Actually, what? I haven't even told you guys. What? Okay. Yeah. Before we get to the top three, so I've been talking to our gal Wendy over at Nissan. Oh yeah. Whoa. Sure. And she has uh, asked me what kind of uh, Titan we would like for a long term review. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. She, she she got us. She was able. She asked me if we could build it, we could pick the color, and I requested that we actually go down to Mississippi and pick it up when it's being born at the factory. This is seriously new. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. I just said that that is so freaking we cool. We can build our own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She asked me what the, how to configure it, so we wanted a work truck. Yeah. And I said no. 
<laughs> no, 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 I did, I did. I, I said we want basically a, a work truck with that kind of... But affordable. Affordable, affordable work truck. truck. Yeah, so it won't have the goodies like, uh, ser- it won't have the tech package, it's not going to have any of the, you know, like the serious... No sunroof, we don't no need sun- that. None of that. But it'll be four-wheel drive. It'll be four-wheel drive, it'll be under $40,000, which still isn't quite a work truck, but for four-wheel drive, yeah. and hopefully it'll be blue. Can we because get a yellow Because it's the color you want. No, because... Yellow? Okay. No, no blue. All, yellow. all in favor of yellow? I... I, I, I suggested yellow. <laughs> she said she, she said blue. Okay. So I wasn't. It's their truck, and we're gonna hopefully have it for six months. Okay. So we're gonna, and we're gonna go down and pick it up. I'm hoping. Yeah. Can we go to a hoot nanny? Well, no. We're gonna do more than that. Oh, cool. <laughs> Here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna go down to Mississippi, pick it up, and we're gonna come back to Nashville and take a tour of the historical collection. Ooh, oh yes. At the, at the, at the ladies, ladies museum. museum. Yeah. We yes. dude, We know that guy. Yeah. And he's a cool Jeff, guy. Yeah. Jeff's cool. Oh man, guys, this is this is great news. Yeah. So uh, thanks for watching. You get the you get the you heard it first. If my wife's watching, sorry, honey, we're not going on vacation. <laughs> Any shout outs there? Yeah, multi-purpose reviewers. Hey, multi-purpose reviewer. I read your comments all the time. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you for commenting. <laughs> he says banana yellow. You gotta go with the Titan XD banana yellow. Uh, well, it's not an XD. It's just a Titan. No, it's a regular Titan. It's a regular Titan. Which uh, I'm okay with. I like the half to much better than the XD. Yeah, it's not the XD. There was also a comment uh, from Thomas Paul who said uh, nobody's buying diesel Colorados. Sales went up because of the ZR2. You're right. And that's partially very true because ZR2 now composes 12% of Colorado sales. But bear in mind, ZR2s are also available with a diesel engine. Yes, and I've, I've, I've met two guys in Colorado who bought diesel ZR2s. They're still very popular. Yeah. And there's somebody else. OSU Cherokee uh, has a comment for you, Nathan. Oh, okay. Hey. Um, Nathan's Goldmine Hill Review helped me sell my wife on the Ridgeline. Thank you, man. No problem, buddy. Yeah, the Ridgeline did okay. I know a lot of people will say, oh, it's not a truck. You know what? It's actually a really easy to drive vehicle that has a pretty good sized bed. There it is. Helping guys sell their wives on whatever so, they so, want. No, 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 no. Not sell their wives. You got to finish that <laughs> sentence, bro. Helping guys sell, sell their wives on whatever on car they want or their truck. truck. That is your new title here. Whoa. By the way, it's you're really the truck whisperer, Nathan. <laughs> By the way, the equivalent doesn't work for me. I, I'm technically a paid professional. My wife won't listen to a word I say when it comes to new cars. Go figure. All right, let's keep going. So, the, so we're at number three now. Yeah, the top three, dude. And that's no this surprise. should be no surprise. It's a Toyota 4Runner. Uh, its uh, depreciation was 12.7 percent, and that equivalent is four thousand six hundred and five dollars. Good. Truck. Popular truck, off-road truck. Terrible color. Is this really the color? Yeah. You, this is a I terrible color. I like co- that color. That's a bad color. I okay. love it. I think the TV is distorting it a little. I think it is a lot. <coughs> in terms of off-roading, in terms of uh, proper off-road SUV, great choice. It's actually hard to beat a 4Runner. I love them. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, you know, uh, the thing about 4Runners is they're in that sweet spot in the market right now. They're crossovers. They're overlanding vehicles. They're off-roaders. You know, the only downside potentially with this vehicle is fuel economy. Yeah, and with gas great. being two, three bucks a gallon, it doesn't really come into play. Yeah, in fact, I, I would love it if Toyota put a diesel on one of these things. That'd be so awesome. I don't think it's going to happen in my so, life. So we're getting to the point where people are going to figure out why there's a Wrangler behind us. Yep, we're yeah, getting really close to that point. But there's a diesel comment really quickly. Oh, yeah, What's the shout out? Um, Traxxas Studios. Hey, Traxxas. Hey. Hey, hey, Traxxas. You really own Traxxas? Are you part the of Traxxas? Yeah, what, what's your Traxxas deal? <laughs> Or is that your YouTube channel? He's, he's very curious about the F-150 uh, diesel. Yeah. It's coming out, the Ford said, uh, second or spring of 2018, which means Soon. like April, May time frame. So that's when it's coming. I've asked for one from Ford. It's not here yet because he wants us to test it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to test it very badly. So we have relationships with the manufacturers. And some of them um, are, uh, you know, give us a lot of heads up on vehicles, mm-hmm. and others don't. <laughs> hey, I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, but the good news but is... we always ask. We always ask. Yeah. yeah, and the good news is we are known for testing trucks in Colorado, and we're, that's what made us famous. And the bottom line is, hopefully... No, for, truck whispering. Truck whispering. And, and bottom line that, says the Wrangler might be number one. He might be. Yeah, okay, well, let me finish. Okay, so let's get to... It's the Toyota Tacoma. It's, it's the about, and this should be no surprise. It lost 10.9% over the course of one year, which is excellent. And that comes out to uh, $3,220. You, you oh, know, sorry, $3,320. You, you know, with these top three, maybe all these vehicles on the list. What is this color? Yeah, what what, is what are, you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing, Zach? 
Oh, well, is that lipstick red? red? That, that's the yeah. lipstick no, red. Not no. Lipstick red. No, it's purple. I've been to a few raves that had this on. Okay. <laughs> but the thing about all these vehicles, especially these top three, if you're going to go out and buy one of these, you might as well get the new one because a used one, even one year old, and these are numbers that, that are nationally, and these numbers are even stronger here in Colorado. Yeah. Right? So if you're going to go buy a one year old Tacoma, you might as well just go buy a new one because it's going to cost you the same thing. Yes, absolutely. Pretty much. That's Almost. what we're getting at with, with this list. Well, thank you again to IC Cars for coming up with this list, by the way. And let's get to number one, Ba-ching. which is, drumroll, it is Boom. obviously that car right behind him, or truck, whatever you want to call it. That's the Jeep Wrangler. It lost 8.9%, which is the equivalent of $3,199. Now, that's really good, but remember, there is a brand new Jeep coming out. Which is this one. And it's just starting to hit dealerships right now. So... That's not this vehicle we're talking about. That's that vehicle that we're talking about. All right, so I had another idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, so we just asked, obviously, Nissan for uh, a long term. Uh -huh. I'd love to get a long term one of these. Yeah, but but not this one, which we... No, we want to remove it. Yeah, that's There's Roman. Yeah, oh, that's Roman. 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 Yeah. You guys are directing guys. That so, so, hey, Jeep, if you're out there, I'm going to send you an email today. I'm going to request a Rubicon version of the JL, and I've got an idea for us. Tommy started with that Jeep. Yeah. But I think we should finish it with this Jeep, which oh, is okay. which is what? Which is do a tour of ghost towns in Colorado. That'd be awesome. Wow, so we got visit, a lot of them here too. Yeah, visit some of the coolest ghost towns in Colorado in the new JL. Does that sound like something you guys want to see? It's something I want to do. Is that something you want to do? Well, yeah, absolutely. Spooky. Ooh. You have to just seriously do off roading to get to some of these towns. They're old mine towns and whatnot that are literally in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So that'd, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. So yeah. so Jeep, if you're out there. Please, I'm going to send you a formal email. If you guys want to see it, put it in the comments below. That supports us. You know, um, sometimes we can get vehicles, sometimes we can't. But the more that you guys watch, the more that you guys comment, the more that you guys support us. And thank you, by the way, to all of our Patreon supporters. If you want to help support us, just click on the link below. Um, uh, we're really working this, hard, this, this, this year hard to grow the team. Yeah. So Zach is new. He's a producer of the show. Uh, we're bringing on a few other people, so we're really trying to kind of give you the latest truck news and car news as soon as possible. That's right. Up the quality of our videos. And if you've noticed that, we're doing much longer, more TV-like shows now, especially on truck and car. And by the way, guys, what days do we publish on car and truck? Well, I know the truck schedule. Okay, what's you that? do the truck one. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, we and publish truck? a brand new TFL truck YouTube channel show. And... Uh, We've been keeping that schedule for a while. And how about, except for auto shows, when we, when, uh, when we do auto shows, we report more right often. when we're there. And car, car, Nathan? And car is uh, Saturdays. Yes, Fridays no. and Wednesdays. Fridays and Wednesdays. Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, the other days. No, it's not Saturdays. Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Sun, it's, it's Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. We're still trying to figure out. No, no, no. Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Yeah. Thank and, you. And then uh, yes, now is longer. Mondays or every, or every day. Yeah. Uh, so... The last thing, we promised it, um, let's get to it, boys. If you were to pick two cars, or you could pick a car and a truck, right? Pick a car and a truck that you would buy used instead of new. What would they be? And let's start with you, Andre. Well, by the way, we missed the picture of the day. I think. Oh, we missed the picture of the day. Okay, what happened to our picture of the day? Uh, yep, it's coming up right now. Let's do a picture of the day. Um, and you can think about that. Well, is, that is that possible? Yeah. It is possible. Whoa, Whoa what, what is what, that? Yeah, is that the picture of the day? That is the picture, is the picture of the day. day. It's a little pixelated, guys. <laughs> Um, it's a lot pixelated. That's that's Sorry my fault. That. But I, I'm going to give you just a couple quick hints. No, this is not a regular Jeep. It is not a Willys. It is something that was developed at the end of the 1950s into the 1960s, early 1960s. And it's specifically a lightweight vehicle. Check this out. Four-wheel independent suspension. Air-cooled V4. What? I'm not kidding. And I know what it somewhat is. amphibious. I know what it is. Is it the goat? It's, no, it's the North Korean kimchi. <laughs> it's none of those things, thank you. But it um, actually, but because of the Korean War and the fact that it's very difficult to ho hoist those Jeeps from old, that's why this was developed for the Marine Corps because it's extremely light. There's a lot of aluminum used in the vehicle. That's all I'm telling you. All right, well, put, is, it, put, it in the it put it in the comments below. Okay. You get the... Uh, uh, 
title of being the first to figure it out. We're Smarty giving, pants. We're giving, yeah, we're giving the hat away with this, but uh, you get to be first. All right, Andre. Multipurpose review nailed it immediately. What? Really? What? What? Okay, so right. you can say it. Is that Mighty Might? It is the Mighty Might. Good job. Multipurpose reviewer is right there. My dad owned one of these. It was a long story, but it was really cool when it did run. You know, uh, I read all of our comments, or most of them, as much as possible, so I really do try to figure out what you guys want. Uh, and yesterday there were a lot of comments about this show, which is our second one, by the way. Mm -hmm. People saying we should do a show like, I don't know, maybe four years ago there was a show called TFL Daily. It was yeah. actually the Fast Lane Daily, it wasn't TFL. The yeah. Fast Lane the Daily. Fast Lane it was, Daily. A, it was a, a daily news show done yes. by uh, another channel. De Derek, right? Derek, Derek yeah. Was yeah. yeah. yeah Derek Unfortunately, it went away a couple of years ago. Yeah, and people are saying we should do a show like that. Well, this is it. This is as close to a daily news show as we're getting. Maybe eventually so, we've got a green screen, because they use green screen. I know. Yeah. No, we're not going to do that? No, I don't oh, This so is our cool. green screen right there. Yeah, that's our green screen? Yeah, we're not doing green screen. They look cool, I think. But yeah. Okay. Uh, unless you guys really want a green screen, but you know how much we... That's a uh, lot of... Maybe in the future. Maybe if they support us, because that gets expensive. Or if we have a sponsor. Hey, yeah, we're a sponsor. So this show is already... We're, we're getting long. How, how long should this show be? Uh, I always said 30 minutes, but we're yeah, probably Yeah, we've gone over yesterday, and we're probably going over right now. Right, we're having so much fun. Yeah, all right, well, let's keep going. Let's, let's pick the top two vehicles that you would buy. Andre, you go first. Yeah. Okay, so we we're talking about luxury. Truck and a car. A truck, really? A truck I have to pick a truck, truck and a car? Yeah. But used versus new. Right. Yes. yes. Right? Um, <clears throat> so I'll start with a car first. Please do. Um, I really like luxury performance sedans. Um, even though I'm a truck guy, I, I like a sedan with a big V8. Okay. So CTS was on this list, and I'll pick a CTS V, a used one that's depreciated. Uh, I would really love that, you know, supercharged V8 CTS okay. V. That would, that's the way to go, I think. Uh, for a truck, I would like actually a um, used V8 truck once again, like an F-150 with a Coyote. Okay. Okay. So there's a lot of them out there. They're they're used. They're a little bit less expensive, and I would go there. Okay, Roman. I'm wondering if like there's a used power wagon on your list. <laughs> no, 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 no. no I'm, I'm actually not going there. Look, I, me, it's very obvious because we've gotten the ones. <laughs> we have an old K10 in the back. Yeah. Uh, we have an old Hummer in the back, and I just recently bought and sold an old RX-7. So that's pretty easy, huh? Yeah, it's pretty easy. All right. Well, geez, that doesn't make it any fun for me now, does it? <laughs> Um, I actually prefer the final generation of the RX-7. RX-8? Or the no, other, no, the no, last no, RX the RX-7. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that was turbo yeah, that's a turbo. Yeah, that's that turbo. thing, I don't know if you can even find one of those that hasn't been molested and turned into a drift car, but I, I've always felt that they were some of the best sports cars ever, and yeah, I, I truly think that that's one thing I'll consider. And the other one in terms of a truck... Yeah, it would be a power wagon. You know, but, but not this generation, the previous generation, because they're a lot cheaper. And yeah, I mean, they still have the big V8, they still have the disconnectable sway bars, they still have all of the armor underneath, and frankly speaking, they're awesome off-road, but they need bigger tires. Right? Remember the Tradesman version? The Tradesman, yeah, There was a Tradesman yeah, yeah. power wagon as well. That's right, the Tradesman yeah. is a lot less expensive, so if you could find one of those used. Ooh. And people are asking us online in the comments about the new power wagon, not the one that's out right now. But oh, the new, well, actually, there, there's, there's a big rumor out there, but... The bottom line is yes, there will be one, according to some insiders at RAM, and that it's right now in the process of being developed, and there's been some spy photos out there, I hear. Yes, prototypes running around, and RAM is moving heavy-duty truck production back to the United States. Yep, back to the USA. Back, back to Mich Michigan, and that's going to be 2020 or after. So not immediate future, but... Right, in and if you guys are truck guys, you know that after a new half ton is introduced and the heavy duty follows next. So there yeah. is, of course, a new heavy duty coming, and that means that there should be a new power wagon. And if the SARS align, maybe it'll have a diesel. I don't know. People, you guys have been asking for it. I agree. It should have a diesel. Send all of your uh, re uh, requests for diesels to RAM. Because we know. <laughs> at ram.com. At ram.com. Well, ram. Give truck us a damn diesel at ram.com. Final shout out to Trucker Dan. Hey, Trucker Dan. Hey, Trucker Dan. Hey, hey Dan. He's um, asking, um, when is the new Chevy 1500 diesel coming? Any new specifications? So we don't have any specifications on the new diesel Chevy, but we Chevrolet said on the record that it will be 2019 model year. So the truck goes on sale like at the end of 2018 calendar year. 
So within that first year, there'll be a diesel. We just don't know a what straight month. straight six diesel, like a Cummins. Straight six. Yeah, that's yep. pretty cool. All right, guys. Well, we've definitely gone over time, boys. Boy. And I think that it's time to say goodbye. And keep in mind, we're going to be doing this show again this Friday from the Chicago Auto Show, where I think we'll do a walk around, huh? That sounds like a damn good idea. Yeah, because we're all going to be there. So the whole team's going to be there, and we'll take it on the road. And if we can figure out the technology, we'll walk you around. We'll show you the uh, new Toyota that is coming out and anything else that happens to pop up uh, as a reveal and then TFL Front Row is also happening starting actually tomorrow we're going to do a live show walk around through the garage they have a garage at the Chicago Auto Show where they actually drive cars and so we'll do a walk around through their live mm -hmm. and on Thursday we're going to do TFL Front Row where you can be in the front row watching these debuts debuts and then Friday we're going to be back all together at the show hopefully doing a walk around of the newest things it's actually a lot a lot of life stuff a lot of work coming There's up a lot of stuff that we're going to have to do in a very short amount of time and thank you to all our Patreon supporters really appreciate the fact that you're uh, keeping us in new equipment like this camera that we're using. That's right. And don't forget to subscribe for uh, TFL Now. And the more subscribers we get, then we realize, oh, there's more people that we can cater to. And yes, please work. subscribe, guys. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Take care. And boys, I think uh, it's time to get ready to go to Chicago. Let's go. All right. Let's, let's do go. it. Let's Aloha. Rock and, roll. and thank you for joining, guys. Yeah, really thanks for joining. It. Really appreciate it. Hey, Zach, why don't you go look at that? Make sure you.